With this video, I'm going to demonstrate a really useful technique for finding the end of a data set. For example, in this particular spreadsheet, we have a column of numbers in column one here. And this column of numbers goes down to some indeterminate number of rows. And in this case, you know, we can scroll down and see that it goes down to row 74. In uh, column two, we can see here very clearly that it only goes down to row 10. But also there are gaps, notice, in our data set. So what we want is we want a technique for finding out where the last data value is in a particular row or column. So I'm going to show you uh, a piece of code that does this, and then we're going to write a little, we're going to, I'm going to talk about a little piece of code to, uh, as you can see here, count the number of negative numbers, count the number of positive numbers, and count the blank cells. Now, I'm not going to write all this code for you. I want you to practice writing this code. But I'm going to show you how to find where the last row is in a data set that's uh, loaded up in a column. So if you go to the web page for this class and you log in, you'll notice that one of the buttons on the left-hand side here is called Standard Subs. Now, I've just created a few subroutines here, nothing magic about this, for demonstrating some very useful things that you might want to do in VBA. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this standard subs button. And it opens up a new window with just a list of uh, some various subroutines that are available here, little pieces of code that you can use just by copying and pasting into your code. So what we want is we want this little piece of code here called find last row. Because that's what we're trying to find. We're trying to find the last row in a data set. So I'm going to click on that. And it takes me, and it jumps down, it takes me to the piece of code that I want. So I'm just going to go ahead and highlight this little piece of code right here. You'll notice it's a function, not a sub. So again, we'll get a chance to see how a different type of subroutine works, a function works. So you don't necessarily have to understand what this does. In fact, I think this code came right out of your textbook. But uh, I'm going to copy that. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and copy that. And I'm going to go back over to my uh, Excel environment and uh, go into VBA. And I have a subroutine ready to go here. And let's just take a look at this subroutine before we go any further. Um, I've just declared a bunch of variables as usual. Uh, notice my very first variable here, last row. Um, that's what's going to hold where the last data set is, the last row of data in my column. So uh, my other variables here are pretty typical. In this particular program, we're also going to need to declare some counter variables to hold the count of the negative numbers, the blank cells, and the positive values. I set my start row to 1 because I know I want to start in 1. And in this case, I'm going to test on my data row or my data column. So I'm setting column to 2. And I have this last row variable that I don't know what the last row is going to be. So I'm going to have to put in a piece of code here to find my last row. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down here. Just below my sub down here at the bottom, I'm going to hit enter, just make a blank space between my sub and my new one. I'm going to paste. So I'm just going to go ahead and paste in the little piece of code I copied. So I'll paste that. And there it is. I actually got an extra blank line I didn't want, so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. One blank line between your subs and functions is all you need. So here's my little function. It's called find last row. And you need to pass in a number that specifies which column you want it to find the last row on. And then don't worry about what the rest of this does. Just realize what it's going to do for you. Now, functions act like values. So that means if I want to find out a particular value, I can use a function in addition to a variable or just a literal number. So in this particular case, the name of the function is find last row. And I need to pass in, you notice as soon as I hit the open parenthesis, it tells me what the arguments are to this function, much like it does in Excel when you're using functions in Excel. And you type the function name, it tells you what the arguments are. So in this particular case, it tells me that it wants an integer in this case. And it wants the column number. So just to test this out, I'm going to put a 2 in there for column number 2. So now it's going to say find last row on column number 2. And it's going to store it in this last row variable, which means, of course, that I can now write a for loop using that value. So it says, you know, for row is set equal to the start row, which was 1, to last row, which is the value returned by this function. We may not know what that is, but we know it's some number that represents the last row of data in a particular column. And then it iterates around and 
displays, uh, I mean, it doesn't display anything, it just goes around and does every one of those rows. Now we can actually run this, and um, instead of just displaying our various counts here, I'll just go ahead and display what the last row value was. So let's just go ahead and ampersand that and type in last row. And there's last row. And so if I run this, it ought to basically do a message box and tell me what the last row is. But before we run it, let's predict what we think it's going to do. Well, this is column two that we're asking for the last row on. So let's go look at column two. So column two comes down and it says the last row of data in column two is a 10. Okay, so if this code works properly, we're thinking that it ought to display a 10 right here. And since we don't have any other message boxes in the for loop or anything, it should just run that for loop as quickly as it can and then display this 10. Well, let's see what happens. Last row is 10, so that worked perfectly. So we're feeling pretty good about that. So what your task now is to basically complete this piece of code. You're going to need some variables to hold the various counters. Then here's a piece of code that will grab the number from the sheet, from the current row you're on. And then you're going to need an if statement. And this if statement is going to do a test up here. It's going to say if number is less than zero, of course, then you want to have your negative counter. And inside this if statement, of course, you're going to need an else if. And another thing, it's going to say something about if number is greater than zero. Now, ooh, maybe we got to think about this. Because think about it, if the cell is empty and you grab number from an empty cell, what's going to happen right here? Hmm, maybe we got an if test up here to first check to see if the cell is empty or not. And if the cell is not empty, then we can have an if then else embedded inside of it to check for negative numbers and positive numbers and count appropriately, add one to each counter appropriately for whether you find a blank cell or a positive number or a negative number. And you can go ahead and count zeros as positive numbers if you wish. So this is kind of an interesting piece of code. Gives you an opportunity to kind of think about how you're going to use your if statements. Do you want to check for those blank cells first? Do you want to check for the numbers first? I'm not sure if that sounds like a good idea. But you need to think about what goes inside this for loop and you get a chance to play out with play with this find last row. And start with column two since you know what the data set is on column two. So you can actually just you know key these numbers in or key some similar, similar numbers in that you actually know what they are. And then for this other column you can just put in a ran between you know something like negative 20 and 100 fill it down as many cells as you wish and then blank out some of the cells just to make sure that the blank cells are not screwing up your program and it still works with blank cells in there and see what happens. So finding the end of data might be something you could call this or um, whatever, but please post this on your week five PB work site when you're finished with it. Thank you.